Hello, everyone. So this is Xi Han Wei, and uh, my topic my topic today is innovations in concrete towers and foundations for onshore wind turbines. Um, so I have been working in concrete wind tower industry um, since the year 2016. Um, I have uh, I've been traveling back and forth between U.S. and China to manage projects in China, and I have built over 400 concrete wind towers in China. Um, so a little bit background knowledge before we we go into the um, concrete towers. Uh, could you, so so as uh, what we have discussed, um, the the goal at this year is to is to um, meet the um, the goal of uh, net zero of carbon emission by the year twenty fifty. So we have uh, thirty years of, we have thirty years to go, and obviously um, there are a lot of homework we have to do. Um, so by this year, so over still over 60% of the energy produced are from the fossil fuels. And uh, if you look at the percentage from the nuclear, and hydro, and wind and solar, it's about uh, 35% in total. Um, so from all this energy, so right now the wind produced about 5.9% of the energy, which is a, a good amount, but um, there's a still a long way to go before um, we get into the um, zero carbon emission. Um, well, looking at the, the 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 goal for the near future for the next decade, um, we to to meet the requirement of uh, net zero, we need to reduce the carbon emission in power generation and also in areas of uh, industry and transportation buildings. Um, so we still need to build a lot of uh, a lot more wind farms to provide uh, the energy produced from the renewable energy. Um, we have already done some homework um, during the past few years. If you look at this chart, the, the black bar is showing the energy produced from the from burning coal mine. And um, um, you can see the trend. So starting from the year 2010, um, we, we started to get energy from less and less of the coal and similar as the oil and the gas. Um, so starting from around the same times, from from between 20, 2000 and from uh, between 2000 and the year 2010, we'll have uh, more and more wind and solar energy being produced. But obviously, this is not enough to for the for the goal of the uh, um, 2050 net zero. So we are we need to we need to make the wind energy more efficient and at the same time to build more wind farms. So there's a limitation in using the wind energy. Um, so during the past 20 years, so we have developed a lot of wind farms in the areas with good, with very good wind resource. Um, so, so starting from, from this moment, um, we are looking at to build wind farms in the areas with less good wind and with more population density. So we have already done something. If you look at a typical wind turbine built about 20 years ago, it's about 1.0 megawatts turbine on the um, with a rotor diameter of 50 meters. And if you look at the typical wind turbine we're using this year, um, it's already increased to 4.8 megawatts onshore with a rotor diameter of uh, 158 meters. Um, so so um, the bigger, the better. Um, we make them, we utilize the wind energy more efficient. Um, we, we also want to reduce the land usage uh, by putting less wind turbines, but produce more energy. And there's another way, there's another option that uh, we utilize the wind shear. So if we increase, if, you, if, we, if we increase the hub height of the wind turbine to capture the wind energy in the high altitude, um, we may also benefit from that, but depending on the wind shear. If we build wind farm in an area with good wind shear, for example, um, we have a wind, wind shear factor of 0.3. If we increase the hub height from 100 meters to 140 meters, um, this the same wind turbine can produce 20% more energy. However, if we um, build wind tower in a less good in an area with less good wind shear, um, this this the energy produced is less significant. Um, so, um, as a summary, we want to we want to build bigger towers and uh, in area with good um, wind shear and we can put the hub height into a, into a, a higher altitude. Um, to, to meet this goal, we have a few options. 
we can stay on the steel tower by make the steel tower taller and slender because limitation for steel towers is, is, is primarily on transportation um, because we need to ship the steel parts through highways, through the tunnels and bridges. Um, we normally limit the maximum diameter of the steel tower to be 4.3 meters. Um, so if we want to make the turbine bigger, um, if we want to make the, the steel tower taller, um, we need to design. We need to specially design the tower to be a flexible steel tower, and do some um, uh, dynamic control on the wind turbine side. Um, on the other hand, we may have some other options. For example, concrete towers. Um, for example, truss towers and steel plate towers, or concrete hybrid towers. So each of these options have its own benefit and uh, disadvantages. Um, for example, the truss tower. It might be um, cost effective, but if you look at the footprint of a truss tower, it's, it's much, it would be much bigger than the footprint of a steel tower or concrete tower. And also, there might be thousands of parts and connection bolts um, in this truss tower that might be an issue. And looking at the concrete towers, um, which, is, which I'm more familiar with, um, so we have built uh, many concrete towers and we see the benefit, we also see um, installation duration might be slower, maybe longer, and uh, it requests a, you know, we need to be careful on the precast accuracy or the accuracy in constructions because it's more sensitive, sensitive comparing to the factory made um, steel towers. Next one. Um, so there's a chart showing a comparison between the four different options. Um, in terms of uh, material cost, aerodynamic behavior, damping, maintenance, experience, foundation, and connection boats, market acceptance, transportation, installation difficulties, erection duration, and dismantle difficulties. So there's a few videos showing that um, showing a um, significant character in these tall towers. The five the five videos are all showing the the dynamic vibration of steel towers. Um, the last two videos are showing the 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 first the first order vibration of a steel tower before we put nacelles and rotors on. Um, you, you see um, the lateral drift at the tower top is is very significant. Um, the middle two videos are showing the second order mold shape of a steel tower that that's typically seen when we put the nacelle and rotors on. You can see the um, top and bottom part of the, the tower stays, but the middle portion of the um, the steel tower drifts a lot. Um, this is uh, a this is very important and critical um, for steel tower construction. Um, if we use the concrete towers, um, this kind of uh, aerodynamic vibrations can be reduced to an acceptable level. All right, so. So a little bit um, knowledge for concrete wind towers in China. So we see the we see the first wind farm built with concrete towers. And actually, it's a concrete hybrid towers with a concrete portion only thirty six meters tall um, and uh, eighty meters steel towers on top. This wind farm was developed in the year twenty sixteen, about five years ago. And starting from twenty eighteen, we we see the. Uh, wind farms with full concrete towers built in China. Um, this year, up to this year, over 1,500 concrete towers and concrete hybrid towers are built in China um, with a maximum hub height of uh, 166 meters. Um, and um, I also see a 4.5 megawatts turbines put on top of concrete towers, but the hub height is a little bit lower, which is uh, 120 meters. There are two pictures showing the comparison of a concrete hybrid tower and concrete and full concrete tower. Um, the left picture is showing the concrete hybrid tower. Um, the bottom part of the cone-shaped portion is made by concrete. It's a it's a little bit longer than the gray area. Actually, the the the, the full cone shape of this tower base are made by concrete, and uh, I believe this is a tower with a hub height of uh, 140 mm -hmm. meters. And the concrete portion is five is fifty five meters. Um, the right figure is showing a full concrete tower. 
uh, almost full. Um, the hub height is 140 meters with a concrete portion of uh, 110 meters. So most of the concrete towers are made by segmental precast um, pre-stressed concrete towers. And uh, we produce the, segment, the segments either in factory or in a precast yard. Um, so I, I, I see half and half. So, so half of the concrete tower suppliers precast the pieces or segments in a factory and half of them produce the segments on the open yard. Obviously, um, there are a lot more advantages of building precast segments in a, in a confined um, factory because you want to, you can have a better quality control and then also you don't have to worry about the, the weather. Um, so so I, I would say all of the concrete towers I've seen are using pre-stressed tendons to pull them together. Um, there are two options of doing this, external pre-stressed tendons or internal pre-stressed tendons. The external pre-stressed tendons means we have the, the pre-stressed tendons going outside of the concrete wall, but inside of the concrete towers, um, depending on the design. But you may have between 10 to 20 tendons going outside of the wall. And the right figure is showing that the other option, the internal pre-stressed tendons, uh, will have the, the conduct going, going inside of the concrete wall, and um, you pull through this pre-stressed tendons um, through this, this conduct, and uh, you, you inject the grout, in this conduct to prevent corrosion of the steel tendons. Um, the joints, I also see two options of the joints, the wet joints or, or grout joints. Um, in, this, in this design, we can see this, the rebars at the edge of each concrete panels and they use the grout to join them together or the dry joint. Um, for dry joint, there's no grout or, or there's no cementitious grout. People may use epoxy grout to, um, for sailing, but um, there's definitely no cementitious grout. And people normally use connection bolts to bolt them together, similar to um, a subway tunnels or precast bridges that can make the construction duration uh, much shorter. Um, foundations. So, so concrete foundations are normal. The foundations for concrete towers are normally um, smaller than steel towers because the self weight of the concrete towers is is about uh, you know probably one thousand tons heavier than self weight of steel tower. So we can make the foundation smaller and saving some material. And normally we see a um, the foundations with hollow, but I also see the foundations with no hollows. That you have to you have to embed the bottom part of the pre-stressed tendons in the concrete to prevent to provide anchor. So if the design of the foundations is with hollow, the construction might be easier. You can anchor the pre-stressed tendons at the bottom part of the foundation corbel. Um, so for a, a, one of the benefit of using concrete tower is to save the anchor cage or embedded foundation ring that can be seen in steel tower. Um, for concrete tower design, we, we, don't, we don't worry about the anchor cage or foundation ring. Um, when people comparing the cost of steel tower and concrete tower, they, they often forget this portion, but this is actually a, a, you know, a big contribution to the total cost of the full tower. Um, uh, that's it. <laughs>